What's up people, my name is Anton and welcome to September. Today I'm going to be taking you through making this Octane Scatter plant set up inside of C40 and Octane. We're going to be going through making the base mesh and then overlaying Megascans assets effectively um, to a way that makes it look real, makes it look natural um, and ultimately creating a nice new look. So without any further ado, we're going to hop right into our new project. Firstly, we're going to close this off and we're going to go about making our base mesh. Um, the way you've got to think about octane scatter working is you're essentially picking a surface and using that to distribute some sort of FBX or asset across that. You don't have to use it for plants, but typically it's um, it's what looks best. So for the example, I, use, I think I made some sort of volume. So I went about just hopping in here and getting a few capsules, just turning the segments up a tiny bit and duplicating them just like this just having to hit a line real quick and just do these throw these about a little bit 90 and then rotate this one just like that minus 90 and we can then highlight these and just turn the height up a little bit so we're left with a sort of intriguing you could say shape um if we try to chuck this into a volume builder real quick we don't have to have the voltages up very high but what it will do is just mesh it together so we get these nice little connections here, which makes it look a little less intersecting. Um, if we turn the voxels up, it sort of keeps that, but what I found was 10 was about the sweet spot because otherwise what happened was it became a little difficult to smooth. Um, always a good idea to do this when you're working with volumes. Um, for some reason you tend to get these, these sort of like voxel integrations here. If you just drop your volume afterwards into a smoothing thing like this, uh, you can, oh, or rather make it a child. You can change the stiffness, move that up a little bit, turn down the iteration just a little bit and have the strength working nice. Well, at the moment we kind of got these nipples, nipples on it, which are interesting. Um, maybe we can turn the stiffness right up, maybe down ever so slightly. Um, and we can, Maybe, maybe if we can keep this the way it is, if we just take a look at our, our geometry real quick, we can remove the smoothing and just whack it in a subdivision surface to see what looks best. And I think that may have, that may have done it. So we can leave this the way it is for now. Um, what we're going to do is just bake this real quick. So we have our base mesh and we don't need to overcomplicate that. And we can just go about saving our file. So we can do this. Plants. So if we take a look here, we can see we've got our different layers which actually comprise this final image. And if we turn them all off, I can show you them one by one so you get an idea of um, how this really works. If we go down to the base layer here, so we've got, the, we've got our dirt firstly, which is obviously the bottom layer. If we didn't have this, it would just be straight white, which sort of creeps through the plants in a way which looks quite unattractive. Um, our base layer is essentially this, which is some sort of like clovers scattered around. You'll see the, the shader itself has an effect which brings it down in certain areas which we're going to go through and then aside from that we have some browner leaves which sort of like sit at the bottom just underneath those clovers and we have some we have some plants which sort of like creep through um, not entirely sure what these are called and then on top of that we finally got some colored sort of like purple almost um berry sort of type plants which purple adds a little bit of tones which burn through and it goes really nicely with the warm light under here which we'll also talk about and then all together we're left with a result which looks a little like this so they all layer over each other quite nicely um things to think about are sort of like height um a little bit of in just net variation in nature generally um and color so hopping back into our original project we can shut off really quickly and start thinking about this um Step one is we need to sort of like take a look at what assets we're going to use. So if we hop back into bridge here, uh, we can see that we have, or oh, well, maybe extend this a little bit. We have a few which I've already downloaded. It may, it may be a case of um, using the same ones again, so we don't have to download them. But we have quite a lot of options. We're in the ground cover section here. We've got a lot of grass, um, sort of like so, sort of salt bushes. You've got a few colored plants. Um, but most of these are leaves and sort of plants which like clump together is the best way of thinking about it. So we're going to take a little bit of a different approach with this tutorial. Um, the last one I used was sorrel with some of the berry plants down here. But for this one, I'm going to go for a grassier approach. 
um, and we can see what kind of result we'll end up with. So if I pick something like this grass, potentially, something like this. Uh, I'd say the tundra grass is probably a little bit long. Hopefully this doesn't take too long, too long to download for the tutorial. But if we hop and just download that while we're working on this, um, that'll get going. And we can just hop in here and make sure we set to Octane right up here. And just chuck the render view on. Um, we should be good to go. Sweet. So now that's downloaded, we can think about exporting. So we just hit export on the tab. It'll start exporting the Cinema 4D. And it may clip with the subdivision. But if we just give it a second, because we've set it to Octane already, it should theoretically jump right in and be pretty ready to use. Um, if we just give Cinema 4D a second, sometimes it takes a minute to load in. But ideally, we will have our plants. Put it in right here. Cool. So first step I always obviously do is we only set up our render settings yet, but for the sake of habit, if we just start setting up our scene a little bit, we don't need to set up the render view, but we set this to aces, path tracing, and hop in the material here, go into node editor, and we need to do a little bit of sorting here, but if you move the displacement maps and just find the albedo, that's what we want, the color, and set that to aces, we will have our aces color space. Um, we can already tell the scale is a little high for this grass here, but that's no problem because we can adjust that in the octane scatter later. So, uh, what we're going to do is we need to filter out some of these because what will happen is if we have large clumps like this, which sort of come off them with mega scans, what will happen is as you're scattering them across, they won't be flush to the geometry. They'll sort of like sort of pan out on top is hard to explain so what i'll normally do is i'll deactivate this and just go through highlighting these and these ones which are quite wide look great on flat planes i'm absolutely sure but for this don't really seem to work you see these smaller ones here are the ones that we're after that tall one will be okay that'll be fine that's cool but it's these wider ones will cause some looks that you don't want you want them all to be imagine them coming from one point um, and then we can head into Octane Objects, Octane Scatter, retoggle our geometry. We can probably start rendering off now so we get an idea of what we're doing really quickly. We're going to set this to 1000 by 1000. <clears throat> Lock this off. Set up our camera so that we are happy with how we're looking about here. Same thing as last time, so the focal length is uh, roughly 200. We never use 36. And just zoom out and we'll have a pretty good pretty good idea of what we're working with there. What we can do from now is direct all of these. These will be randomized in the Octane Scatter, so they won't all be in the same place. Toggle these visibility off so that, oh, there's always a bit of a task. Make sure the visibility for these is toggled off so that what we can do is then head into Octane Scatter, select the subdivision surface as a surface, and you'll start to see the grass will scatter on top of it. So we need to think about scaling this down a little bit first, because by default, this ain't ideal. Obviously, the move, move the count up, and it's going to get completely covered, which is wonderful. But we want this to be a little smaller. So if we just take uniform here, we can make this 0.5. Um, I'd say 0.5 looks, looks pretty good, but maybe, maybe we'll stick with 0.5. I'm going to turn the count up. So we've got, we got a pretty covered pretty covered geometry here. Um, at the moment, these are all uniform, meaning they're all exactly the same size, exactly the same rotation, positioning, scale, absolutely everything. So we have a universal, well, when I go about using plants, I just add a universal random effector, which is going to be in every single scale. And I uncheck position, make sure it's in the effectors tab. And use the scale make sure it's on uniform scale and set this to about minus one and straight away we're going to see that some of these are being made bigger some of them are being made smaller but it's okay because we've got a global um scale adjustment here so that's 0.25 again and maybe make this about might be slightly too much but 50,000 tends to be the trick and um, we can also make sure we're affecting the rotation here which is a slight little thing you can look even in this viewport here and see which one works. I believe it's H, but yeah, P's rotating it that way. That's not what we want. And this one is the, yeah, 
So we can just make this about 360. And it means they're going to be rotated in different ways, but not by the x or y axis. Now, what we can do is this is the principle we're essentially going to overlay with each scatter, basically. Um, you can toggle each one on and off, but what you're doing from this point on is layering them, lighting it right, and um, you will end up with a realistic result thanks to ACEs and mega scans. If we zoom this in just to the right resolution, you can already see this glass is looking pretty, pretty nice. Um, we can even turn this up a little bit if we want complete coverage, so we're not seeing that. But what we want at this point, I'd say the only observation I have is that the random effect does a nice job of randomizing it, but it's it's all the same growth in the same area. So for that, what we can do is use a shader. Um, shader is almost, you could almost think of it as a more precise version um, of a random effector, but in a slightly more uniform way. So what we can do, we can drag that on. And the way the shader effector works is you need to head into shading and this, under the shader tab, you can select a noise. And the way you've got to think about this noise deformer is that it's whether it's black or whether it's white, it's choosing um, what scale to affect the chosen sort of parameter, right? So if we have the scale set to one, what it means is where it's black or where it's white, um, it's gonna have it scaled up by one and where it's the opposite color, it will have it scaled down. Um, and we can leverage that to our advantage by scaling this up a little bit and then turning the contrast up. And you get a little preview here, but you'll start to see that it's scaling up in certain areas and it may be a better shout to set this to minus one so that it's more visible what we're doing. So you can see that it's attributing the shader here across the UVs of the object. And as we play with the parameters of this, you'll see that it will start to fade in and out in certain areas. And we can even go about changing the speed here so that we have complete control over what we do. And because this is grass coverage, I'd be inclined to turn this, the contrast down a little bit so that we have constant coverage. If I turn it all the way down, it will just be completely uniform, which isn't what we want. Say around midpoint would be quite good, and we can go about either. I'd say scaling up over the side, and you can see the geometry becomes a little more deformed because of this. Um, at this point, it's a tweaking job, but we can set it up like this. Maybe turn it back down to 0.25. And this way we've got our grass. I'd say we can we can go about laying some other areas and tweaking it later on, but that is that is the look that we're essentially after. We can then start picking our other assets. So we've got some grass here. Let's go about getting some brown leaves. Um, something to look at look almost like a field, park a parky sort of field is what we'd go for. I would pull up some photo references at this point, but for the sake that I just came back from a walk, I'm gonna try and use memory. This ground cover seems to always work quite well. So if we just export this, um, it should shoot, shoot into our CPD quite quickly. And we should be able to work ahead. So if we just give it a sec, always takes a hot minute for um, mega scans to import into Octane, but it's just because it's loading all the textures and getting the nodes correct. We can remember to start. Or I might actually unspeak this. Uh, this isn't loading in the same way at the minute, but I'm sure a refresh will fix that. Uh, if we head to the albedo, make sure that's set to aces. You can see straight away the difference between that being in linear sRGB, way too dark, doesn't fit with the color space to this, which makes it far nicer and brighter. Bear in mind we're using default lighting at the moment, which ain't, ain't too bad. We can, I don't think there's too much to actually sort through here. We can scatter pretty much all of these. So if we duplicate this scatter here, um, drag all of these into here like normal, we'll delete these ones, and then drag all of these into here like normal. Make sure we're toggling off the visibility of all of these. So it's not intersecting our geometry. For some reason, when you put things into scatters, they don't automatically become invisible. We have to manually do it, but that's not an issue. We can turn it on and see what we're working with. We realize we've got a shader here, so let's duplicate the shader so it's working off a different base. We can delete this one and just drag this one on top. And you'll see what I mean by the universal random. We'll just have that in every scatter. And we can start to tweak in a way. So if we get to this... Um, we can firstly just see what this shade is doing. So it's doing a little bit, but honestly not very much. If we go to our shading here, we can turn the contrast up a little bit. Uh, make sure our geometry is selected so we see what our ground plane is. 
and scale these right down, right, right down. These are way too big. Um, the shader that is too contrasted. We want this to be a little more spread, and to, in order to make it different from the grass, we can also, um, I'd say, maybe, I'd say something like this. We want a pretty, pretty even cover. Um, the more we play with the contrast here, it's going to become quite a whole lot better. So we probably wouldn't want that. We want, we want a pretty nice cover, but this is a little too green. I have a feeling that if we were to overlay that with the grass, it would just be over greenness. Although it's a nice little undertone, um, it may do us a favor to head into the node editor here. And there's already a color creation node, thankfully placed for us. Just change the hue ever so slightly to the left to make it a little more, you can even select a zone to render here. Just zoom in on that and start tweaking. Maybe move the shift key up a little bit. Just like that. You can either saturate it up or down, but bearing in mind the brown that we're after is a dark red, actually. So it's not that that you want. It may well be the... Uh, Brightness. Dad, I feel like a desaturated though we've got better. So you can almost go for that. Take this off and see what we're working with. Working with look which is quite good, although I'm not I'm not entirely sure about the red tones. If you desaturate that a little bit more, you can see we're starting to get some more brownier. Um if we start mucking with the hue. I think ultimately this is something we're after. If we just scale it up a little bit, we can see a bit better. 7.5 is going to be way too large, just remembering. Maybe 0.2. Mm, I think we should go back to turning the countdown. So if we make this 50 or, God, maybe even 20. we we'll start to see they're scattering a little bit nicer there. Just a little bit. Um, if we head into our shader here, we can just mess with the seed of this. So it's hitting different spaces. Although, because of the the scale is we want them let's let's try to overlay them on some more of the grass we want them piled on top of each other and maybe maybe scale that grass down ever so slightly uh, 0.2 maybe something like that and then you can see that we're starting to get a pretty good idea of our layers these in particular seem to mm, I'm not entirely sure about the colour. I want to tweak the colour a little bit because they've, they've given me sort of two top dark brownie red sort of uh, looks at the minute. Mm, if we tweak up the hue. Turn the hue up. It's done that. It's taken it a little less red there. That may have been the right call. And I think for now, We'll let those lay on the, on the grass nicely. It will look a little bit nicer once we start adding lighting. In fact, we should probably set off our HDRI now. We can use a little bit of a different HDRI this time. If we just take a look at our library, we can find maybe like an outside. So to, uh, HDRI is got road trips here. So something, something in a forest. Mammoth cave entrance. How about, how about that? Let's, let's get a little bit of greenery involved. Uh, which looks quite good and let's just bop bop bitty bop bop set this Ooh, let's try rotating this a little bit getting a lot of light from above but not so much from the sides which is sort of what we're looking for a little more so we can head back into our library try and find something that fits a little bit better but office windows here hmm are these paradise ones? Got snake rooms, statue yards. A lot of these outside which are quite nice, but it tends to be directional light that really makes makes these rooms look good. If we head to commercial locations and find something a little bit, these botanical gardens look interesting. Let's try these. Amazing. So we're starting to get a little more light here. You're starting to see where those. Leaves really laying on, but we need a dirt texture because we still got the white shining through. So if we head to, let's take a look. 
Layering mega scans, this is always best for nature. This purely because of the 8K detail that they managed to capture. If we head to ground, we can really find some roots. For, maybe more like forest. Just a rocky forest floor like this. Easy as hitting download and then exporting, making sure it's an aces. Um, and while that's going, we can look at some more plants. Um, we can get exporting. So we just head to back to our orc ground cover. We start thinking about maybe some plants to shoot through because right now we've got our base color, but the dirt will fill up the gaps, and we want some more variation in um, variation in the plants. So we can head to our yellow archangels potentially. These look interesting. Um, maybe these are the ones I used last time. Although I have a feeling that they might fit quite well. We've got some ground cover right there. We can give give these archangels a shot. So now that we've got our rocky forest floor imported, what we can go about doing is just deactivating the scatters real quick so we can see our base geometry and start making this look a little more natural. We can whack our forest floor on here. Bear in mind we're not gonna see it all, so it's not accuracy too much that we're going for with this. We're just looking for something that could pass as ground. Um, it's gonna turn this back into aces and our node editor really quickly because as we can see, this is far too dark, but in essence, the leafy sort of dirtiness is kind of the look that we're after. If we head into albedo here and set this to ace again, we'll see it'll brighten up. And it's stretching around the UVs a little bit. So if just a quick fix for that, we head in here and set this to cubic and seamless. Uh, you can see that we're getting a pretty nice rocky floor. If we set this to 50 and 50, it will half the, um, the spread. And we can go about adding our... So you can see the dirt shining through the grass there. And secondly, our leaves, which go really nicely with the tone of the um, tone of the dirt. We can even just make sure we're saving real quick and find our second 3D plant that we're going to import. Head into brown cover and find our yellow archangels here. Export these into C4D so we can start to arrange some of these and these will, these will provide the plants which will creep through. After this, I'd say the final step will be adding a little more color. Um, right now it seems very natural, but maybe some like purple or berry type plants to creep through would really make this. And we can start thinking about lighting. <clears throat> so as this exports, exporting a few little bits of geometry here, you can see it's gonna start making our materials inside of Octane. And we can go about arranging the same process as last time, just here. So if we just deactivate some of these, it's all what you have to deactivate a lot when you're using um, Octane Scatter for some reason. There's lots of ticks and crosses and making sure the geometry doesn't intersect at all. Um, set this back to aces as we normally do. And these seem to be okay. Um, there's a few. Maybe if we leave that one and some of these, I'd say, I'd say we were pretty, pretty much safe enough with those ones. Uh, duplicate our scatter, duplicate our shader, and move these into. Oh, make sure we're deleting those ones first, and then put, put the variants into the octane scatter there. Disabling our visibilities. This is always like a little game I have to play. It's like how quickly can I do it? If I had a cup of coffee, I can do it in about t minus five seconds and we just activate that and see the framework uh, we can replace the do 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 <clears throat> you place the shader in here with a new one and start messing with this to make it look a little different so if we set this to 800 um turn the contrast up a little bit we want these to scaled up because we want these to creep through so we can set our distribution back to about 0.5 or so but maybe a little much, we need our count turned right down to about a thousand maybe. Um, set our shader, which is still quite big considering. If we turn our contrast all the way up. Maybe we can up the scatter ever so slightly. Count, sorry. Uh, 10, 10,000, oh, slightly too high. Maybe 5,000, see how that looks like with the grass. I'd say we need to scale it up a little more, so we can maybe put this point eight even. Something like this to really creep through. Um, this is actually looking quite nice. The only thing I'd say is I kind of want to change the hue so it separates itself from the grass a little bit. But we can easily do that with our color correction node just here. 
we can either move that up, which will make it a bit more bluey. But yeah, saturated. You can already see doing that alone has had a little bit of a nicer impact. Um, it doesn't blend in with the grass as much. Um, and I'd say, I'd say we can almost leave it at that. Maybe potentially 0.75 always seems to be a lucky number. We can leave it at that. We can even go as far as going in here and messing with the seed a little bit if we really want to. Just do we want to roll the dice a little bit with the way this is arranging. But I think something like this is quite nice. When it comes over the sphere like this, arranged randomly, it looks quite pretty, I think. And we can overlay our leaves. And you can start to see we're getting we're getting quite a nice natural look here. At this point, I kind of I kind of want to start speaking with our lighting a little more. We can get our dirt back in. Um, and I want to play with firstly the hasty eye. So we can go about rotating, seeing what angles sort of work. Obviously, that's far too directional. But this lighting seems much more natural. Um, got a little bit of direct light there. You don't really have anything to be afraid of with these assets because the quality is really great. Like the geometry, you have a lot of freedom with what you can work with, and you can create some really nice camera angles as well. If we just rotate our base geometry, all the sc um, scatter should follow. And although it kind of looks like a soft body object, this geometry does seem to have some nice pitch. We sort of cream out from the back and do it, do a lot of justice with um, the scatter. I'd be inclined to leave it. I, I, I feel like I wouldn't even want to add any more at this point. I feel like all those three sort of work quite well together. Uh, you get a nice little bit of greenery mixed with the leaves and it, it creates a nice grassy look. Um, in terms of lighting, what I'd do is I'd hop out. We can duplicate our camera so we can mess up with some more camera angles. Um, but what I do is, as you see, we're working with a lot of cool natural light. Uh, as a rule of thumb, natural light always tends to be much more on the cooler, sort of bluer side. So add down here where it's a little darker, I'd think about adding more of like um, a warmer, almost sunlight type of tone um, for the sake of composition. And the way we go about doing that is going to objects, lights, um, creating an area light, doing the same thing we did last session where we hit to animation tags, target, make sure this is set to the subdivision surface and just moving this back a little bit in any direction for now. Um, that's about the right way, but we want it not here, oh, but really to come from, you can see just where our angles are there. So if we move this in a little bit, we want it down, almost down here. And um, we can set our camera visibility to off. So we've done that annoying little bit in the corner. We can scale this up. So we're getting a bit more of a broader reach. And you can see we're getting a nice little, nice, nice look there. We set this to primary environment. It shows just what that light's doing. And you get a nice little sense of the edges. It's already quite warm for some reason. But if we just head into the light settings and dim down the temperature a little bit, you'll get a nice little sort of sun rising effect. And as we move this over, it should creep around the edges, just like this, which looks really nice. Those yellows there are a little too strong, so I'd be inclined to tone this down just so it's touch, maybe more like 80, rather 80 rather than slash zero. And we can toggle our HDRI back on so we can start to see what we're working with. We can even go about making this maybe a little less intense here um, by rotating where you want to. Maybe just like this. And we can start with our look developing process a little bit. Something that I found that works really nicely, especially with this, um, if we turn the intensity back up, just so we're getting some nice looks. Um, something I find that works really nicely with this warmer light is if we head into here, we can do a little post-processing, which I tend to stay away from because I feel like it looks really cheesy. Um, it reminds me when I was first starting out with Optane, but we can add a little bit of bloom, which can add some nice glow depending on the um, sort of like higher, the brighter areas in the image, essentially. If we turn it all the way up without adjusting anything else, it could apply the whole image. But if we play with our cutoff, it will only do it on the yellow bits, which when done sparingly, and I mean very sparingly, I feel like bloom and post-processing should be like a touch to your renders, not the only thing that makes them. You can see that we're getting a nice little bit of glow, but only down here, and it really it really adds to that sort of sunrise effect. At this point, what we can think about doing is maybe messing with some new camera angles to do the, do the um, render a little more justice, so we can head into our other Octane camera, 
Um, if you want to adjust zoom, I'd always recommend doing it just from the focal length. It tends to look better. You can set this to about 500 and maybe think about some depth of field. So we can move this about and you can already see we're getting some really, the, the detail is, is really, really cool. You can you leverage that to your, to your advantage. If we move up here, we can see where this sort of part of the geometry is creeping out from behind and we've got the foreground and what we can think about doing is adding some depth of field by going to thin lens, uh, rather hitting this depth of field, unticking autofocus and this little focus button here means you can pick somewhere the focus. So if we set the aperture to maybe 20 for now, it's going to blur out the whole image. But if we click in certain areas, you're going to see it's going to focus where you want to focus. So this for one looks really cool because what it means is we've got this, if we turn the aperture down just because this is a little strong. We've got this subtle blur on the foreground here. Um, we can even go about vignette to maybe darkening that out later in, in post if that's what you wanted to do. And we've got this in focus here, or we could even invert that and start focusing on different parts of the image here. Or going as far as just literally move it about. Maybe, maybe the down here looks a little better. So you're really capturing parts of the um, parts of the image. This is easily one of the like, easiest ways to create detailed, um, like high resolution nature. Um, and if you were to change this from a still render to something which is motion, you could even have the camera panning in slightly and the um, geometry just rotating on an axis here. And you'll see that will interact with the um, depth of field and the light itself. You'll see it sort of shining through. Um, if you wanted to even go a step further, you could go about rotating the HDRI. So you sort of see the light adapting. A little touches like that will really make your renders and take them to the next level. If you're doing artifacts or something in nature um, as ground cover, this is a great, great method for um, sort of creating those looks that you're after. So having said that, we can head back to our original image. And um, I'll leave you guys here with the final result. I hope you enjoyed and um, I'll see you in the next episode.